teachers, just like architects, engineers, and other professionals are designers. If architects design houses and buildings, engineers design roads and bridges, so what do teachers design? Teaching calls for planning and designing. In principle, no teacher enters a classroom without knowing what to teach or how to teach. The question on what to teach involves the mastery of the subject matter. On the part of the teacher, it entails having enough knowledge and understanding of the content. The question on how to teach focuses on the strategies, methods, and the selection of instructional materials that can best deliver the content. Pervasive influx of the new and emerging technology in the educational arena has prompted scholars, learning specialists, and educational technology practitioners to explore and put in practice the principles of instructional design. This is another complex field of study that many may find it quite technical. Teaching with technology calls for the understanding of the key principles of instructional design in the process of preparing instructional plans and in developing instructional materials intended for both classroom-based and online delivery. In this particular lesson, we will study instructional design, its definition, models, and usage in the context of online course design and management. There are several definitions of instructional design or ID you can find in literature. Just like the other terms that we have learned in the previous lessons, instructional design is defined based on one one's background knowledge and orientation. A teacher may define this term in the context of lesson planning, while a system or program developer may express the definition and understanding of ID in the context of developing or producing technology-driven program instruction. So let us have some of the definition of instructional design. Instructional design is the systematic development of instructional specifications using learning and instructional theory to ensure the quality of instruction. It is the entire process of analysis of learning needs and goals and the development of a delivery system to meet those needs. It includes development of instructional materials and activities and try out and evaluate of all instruction and learner activities. Another definition is, instructional design is the systematic process of translating general principles of learning and instruction into plans for instructional materials and learning. Other definitions are, instructional design is a systematic approach to planning and producing effective instructional materials. It is sim similar to lesson planning, but more elaborate and more detailed. Another definition of instructional design is a systematic approach to course development that ensures that learning goals are accomplished. It is an iterative, meaning it's repeating. It's a repeating process that requires on ongoing evaluation and feedback. The last definition of instructional design is the art and science of creating an instructional environment and materials that will bring the learner from the state of not being able to accomplish certain tasks to the state of being able to accomplish those tasks. According to Siemens, Instructional design is based on theoretical and practical research in the areas of cognition, educational psychology, and problem solving. 
from all the foregoing definition of instructional design, let me give you the key concepts that can make your understanding of ID simple so that we can translate them in actual practice. From all the definition that was given, we can say that instructional design is a systematic process which means that it follows a procedure or a sequential approach. It involves application of theories and principles in learning. Hence, it focuses on the act of learning and the understanding of how people learn. You can view some of the educational and learning theories and principles you have learned from the courses you have taken in teacher education. ID also includes the production or design and development of instructional materials and the technologies to support the delivery and the achievement of the stated learning goals and outcomes. At this point, you are beginning to create a mental picture of what instructional design or ID is all about. As you think of your future tasks as, as teachers and designers, and to reinforce your understanding about instructional design, let us watch this video. So I will just give you the exact link of the instructional design video through our GC. Let us move on to the instructional design models. So instructional design comes in various models. While there are several models of instructional design, However, and for the purpose of your present course in educational technology, let us focus our attention on the basic and simple ID models intended for teachers and novice designers. First, we have the ADI model. It is a instructional design model, perhaps the most popular and widely accepted ID model. The acronym ADDIE stands for Analyze, design, develop, implement, and evaluate. This is the best known ID model and commonly used in education. The Hannah Finn and Peck design model is another simple ID model that consists only of three paces, namely needs assessment, design and develop, then implement, as shown in this figure. The needs assessment phase is where the designer formulates the program's objectives. The design phase of this model is where the designer creates ways to achieve the stated goals and objectives. In practice, it is the stage that challenges the creativity of the designers. The final phase is development and implementation. It is at this phase where the program or the plan is put into place. It is also at this phase where the designer makes decision as to whether or not to continue or revise the program. Although this is not the final revision that will be undertaken by the designer. One of the outstanding feature of the Hannah Finn and Peck design model is that the evaluation is continuous throughout the designing process. So this model is best used in developing technology-driven instructional resources. The third simple ID model is the Dick and Carry design model. It prescribes a methodology for designing instruction based on a reductionist model of breaking instruction down into smaller components. Instruction is specifically targeted on the skills and knowledge to be taught and supplies the appropriate condition for the learning of these outcomes. Dick and Curry model is a systematic cycle that consists of nine iterative cycles and a summative evaluation of the whole effectiveness of the instruction as shown in this figure. To better understand and to enhance your understanding on the relationship of the various components of this ID model, I will give you a link for you to watch more about Dick and Carry instructional design model. I will give the link to our GC. 
Please focus on the flow of the various components in the model and write the differences or similarities of it with the other ID models. The last ID model that we will discuss is the Assure Instructional Design Model. It was developed by Heinrich and Molenda in 1999. The primary goal of this model is to produce an effective teaching and learning approach. This model serves as a guide for teachers in planning and conducting instruction using instructional technology. There are six simple steps to follow in the model representing the acronym ASSURE. The first phase in ASSURE model is the analysis of your target students or audience. Understand their learning styles and know their prior knowledge of the subject matter you are about to teach. The second phase is when the designer states learning goals and objectives. It is important that at this stage, the designer takes into account the three learning domains, cognitive, psychomotor, and affective, in stating the learning goals and objectives. The third phase is the selection of instructional materials that will support the delivery of content. There are three options a designer can take, namely to select, modify, or develop the materials. This is quite a crucial stage in the model because wrong choice of materials may not result to effective learning. The fourth stage is the utilization of the instructional materials in teaching and learning process. The teacher at this stage has the task to create engaging learning activities using the appropriate materials. The fifth stage of a SURE model is requiring learners' participation. At this stage, the teachers creates engaging learning activities where the students can participate actively in problem solving and in critical thinking. Learning activities are designed to allow the students to interact with the teacher and express their feedback. The sixth final stage of this model is evaluation, which is final measure as to the extent of learning on the part of the students and the evaluation of whether or not the teacher has achieved the stated learning goals and objectives. So, to summarize, teaching online requires careful planning. While technologies are there to drive online learning, the teacher remains the most effective medium to deliver instruction. However, this calls for enough time in planning and creativity in designing for online course delivery. Understanding the principles of instructional design can help you prepare not only your instructional plan but also in developing and producing online instructional resources.